How much should we spend on a little weekend trip to the mountains? I'm gonna break that down for you today. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a really good day. So we went on our first trip of 2024. We went on a little two night trip to the mountains with our four kids and I thought that I would do a cost breakdown. And the reason I'm doing this is, I guess to show you how travel can work into your budget. I also know that what is affordable to one person is not affordable to another. And this is just to kind of give you some ideas. Everyone's budget is going to be different and to just kind of do the best we can with what we have. And sometimes a weekend getaway can just be staying at home and doing things in your community that make you feel happy and joyful. And that's how we handled our summer. If you, I'll link to our July staycation to talk about the cost breakdown of that. But anyway, first of all, if you're new around here, hi, my name is Lydia Sin and I make videos on frugal and simple living. I like to talk about how to save time and money because I do believe that on some level, you can do both. Our family went on our first trip of 2024 in uh, the first weekend of February. So we left Thursday, February 1st. Um, we got back Saturday, February 3rd because we teach Sunday school on Sundays. And so my husband took some paid time off. Use your PTO. Use your PTO. Use it. Um, your family needs to spend time with you. Work is not everything. We rented an Airbnb in Fort Payne, Alabama, which probably doesn't sound like the most exciting weekend getaway, but one, it's the closest mountain range to us, so it's like Appalachian foothills, and number two, we were going there to do some state history. So we're doing Alabama history with my fourth and sixth grader, and I thought, well, let's go to the different things that we learned about. So Russell Cave Monument is up there. That was a cave used by the indigenous people. And so I thought we could talk about like, we rented a little A-frame Airbnb and I will link to it below if you're interested for two nights. It was $341.87 for our family and we had plenty of space. You know, my husband and I had a room. My kids had a loft upstairs. Um, there was a pull-out couch for a child who, bless his heart, he was a little nervous sleeping upstairs because it was like a, a loft with a bridge type thing. And then an area for our daughter to sleep. So lots of room to spread out. A full kitchen because we do not like eating out when we travel if we don't have to. We want to make the eating out portion part of an experience. And when you're going out in the middle of nowhere, there's nowhere to experience. And we didn't want to do fast food. That Thursday night when we left, I had actually made dinner to take with us and I put it in a thermos. And we're doing it 90s style, right? Did you travel in the 90s? If you were a 90s kid with your mom and she had her bread, her loaf of bread and her peanut butter in the back seat and she was psh, 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 passing out peanut butter sandwiches. I really hope that wasn't just my family. <laughs> so I made turkey dogs and when we stopped, at our first red rest stop, um, we all got out. We went to the restroom. My kids and I did some like <laughs> stretches and jumping jacks. My husband was actually on a meeting on the phone while I was driving. Um, the work never stops for him. And so I made everyone's turkey dogs. I had a little fruit salad. Um, I had little bags of chips. And everyone was happy with that. And it cost minimal. So I bought hot dogs and buns. They were five bucks. I had the chips at my house and I had the fruit at my house. And so that's kind of my first tip. If you're wanting to travel with little children, like take some stuff that you have. I had grapes. I had strawberries. I had raspberries. I took those. I made muffins. I made little brownie bites. I made stuff using what we already had and I took it with us. Sometimes we go big. A few years ago we went to Disney, we did the meal plan, we did everything, and sometimes we go small. And I will tell you, my kids remember the small trips and the details of the small trips more. I do not know why. <laughs> also brought breakfast for day two, so we brought cinnamon rolls and sausage and we warmed them up in our air fryer. That air fryer, Sheila, has gone with us more places. She has been to 19 states in two years. 
<laughs> she has saved us hundreds of dollars. Um, Saturday, before we went out hiking, we went to the grocery store and I got things like turkey sausage, um, stuff for lunch, so sandwich, like roast beef turkey, uh, gouda, haverty, bread, french toast for the next day for us to warm up, and then and then some stuff for dinner. So I got the the trays of the pulled pork. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's the, uh, I think it's Jack Daniels makes it, and it's actually really good. Buns. Um, I got Greek. I got a chopped Caesar salad, and that's what we had for dinner. So we had pulled pork sandwiches, fruit, and Caesar salad, and it was so good. No complaints. All of my kids ate it, which is a win. And it's, it's kind of striking that balance of... We're not on vacation because when you travel with kids, that's different than a vacation, right? Um, but I still don't want to cook, cook. And so having things that are easy to warm up that take just a few minutes and then we'll, you know, settle in in front of the fireplace, watch a movie together, play a game. We brought games with us. Settlers of Catan and Moose Masters. Those are really fun games to play with kids. And it's just kind of a change of scenery. So we went to the grocery store, like I said, to Walmart Friday morning, and we spent $86.23, and that was for lunch, I mean, lunch for six people for two days, dinner for six people, and breakfast for six people. So that comes out to $3.59 a person. And yeah, that's a little more than I would probably spend on a daily basis, but this is travel. This is a trip. This is something special. Saturday we hiked. So we went to Little River Canyon, which is a waterfall. It's so beautiful. And then we decided to hike to the canyon or down to the river itself. And I love to hike. Um, I'm not an expert hiker, but I have hiked some pretty intense trails, and this one was pretty intense. It had like 127 steps down to the bottom, but like 300 and some odd steps coming back. And I, at the time, was like, wow, my leg presses, they've been really working out. I don't feel any burn in my legs. And then the next morning I woke up. I am an old mom. <laughs> who cannot walk. <laughs> it was fine. It just, whew, it humbled me. I am easily humbled. I've also been using this app as a family called Fantasy Hike, and we're doing a Hobbit hike. And so for every few miles you do, it says the road. Why? It, it gives you like a place that you are in the Shire as you head out on your quest. So right now the road is winding through a wood of ancient oak trees. And so far we've hiked 40 miles this year. So not too bad with, with little kids. We didn't have to pay for Little River Canyon or the Russell Monument, but we do have the every fourth grader in a park free pass, which is really easy if you have a fourth grader. I will link it below. They do a little game and then they get a National Parks Pass, which is good for about a year. And they can visit all the national parks and it includes their family. So it is a family pass, which is a great way to... After we went to Russell Monument, we did look up some stupid touristy things, which is one of our favorite things to do when traveling. And we found something called the Rock Zoo, which is the silliest thing I've ever seen in my life. Somebody just painted a bunch of boulders to look like animals. It is nonsensical. You just drive past and look at it and it is ridiculous. But my kids are still talking about it. And then we happened upon huh, a thrifter's dream, the unclaimed baggage store. The unclaimed baggage store is in Stocksboro, Alabama, and it's actually just interesting to go in, even if you don't plan on buying anything. They have a little, tiny little museum, and then they have stuff on the walls that you can look at. Um, but I did end up getting my daughter a little outfit and a little frozen three-dimensional book that's really cool and just some little kids books and that was it. Um, I kind of got grossed out because I tried on a really cute Sherpa pullover and then I found some used very dirty tissues in the pocket. I was like, you know what, I can't, I can't. I realized I could take it home and wash it, but I would never get that image out of my head. And I'm sorry I shared that story with you. That was pretty gross. But mm, um, I would say some of the deals weren't that good some of them were, like you can get some Kendall paper whites for $7. Basically what it is, is they get pallets of unclaimed baggage or baggage that's gotten lost 
and the airline, you know, comps the person and then this company sells it. And if you're if you're ready to, if you're willing to dig, if you're willing to spend lots of time, you can find some treasures. We just went in, looked around, picked up a few things and then got out. Did spend about $35 at Unclaimed Baggage. I rounded up so it was an even total. And then we spent about $75 on gas. It wasn't too bad. Gas prices up there are fairly inexpensive. Plus we had a full tank when we left. So that brings our total to $538.10. So a cost per person breakdown, it means it costs my family less than $90 a person to go on our little weekend trip. And that includes everything. So let's talk about tips for road tripping with kids and tips for road tripping with kids if you want to stay within a budget. So my first tip is to set realistic expectations based on both your budget and the temperament of your children. We cannot go further than five hours in a day. That's just too much for a couple of our kids. They, they need to get out and stay somewhere at that point. So if we're going on a long trip, in 2021, we went to 15 states in two weeks. And so every four hours we were stopping somewhere. And sometimes we were stopping somewhere and spending the night and sometimes we were stopping somewhere and we were staying for a long time but just planning out based on your kid's ability to sit in a car for that long. But even if you were driving all the way, plan your stops. So look at where rest stops are. There's actually an app called USA Rest Stops that will tell you where the rest stops are on your location, I mean on your trip, and this is a great place to get out, to stretch. There's usually picnic tables. We take a football to throw around. We have a travel size soccer net that I keep in my car just all the time and getting out, finding a safe place, because there are trucks coming and going. Keep an eye on your kids. That's your responsibility, nobody else's. And stretch, play ball, sit at the picnic table and eat. Maybe just spend some time there. Or find a park. You can just go on Google Maps, look at parks near me, go to a park. Maybe it has a walking trail and relax for a little bit. Number two, traveling with kids is not a vacation, it is an experience. A vacation is relaxing, a vacation is rejuvenation, a vacation is something you can do at home if you don't have a place to take your kids. <laughs> and I know like I am, I am a person who wants to speak highly favorable of my children and other children. I'm just saying that it is hard to take children away from their home and routine and for you to relax. So if that is the goal of your trip, don't listen to me, listen to somebody else. For me, it is for us to have an experience together and I know it's gonna be exhausting. And I know that we're gonna have meltdowns, we're gonna be upset because we're off our routine, things are gonna be different. And so to set my expectations for that. And part of that is letting your kids know what to expect. This is where we're going. This is how long we're gonna be in the car, showing them pictures of where you're staying, kind of giving them a script and walking them through what is gonna happen. Number two, three, four, whatever list we're on, snacks. Snacks are your friend. They're a friend for you, they're a friend for them. Get a cooler, put it where you can get to it, put drinks in there, put snacks in there. We're having a meltdown, here's a snack. We're having a meltdown, Here's a fun drink that you don't get at home. Number whatever, meal plan based on where you're staying. If you can get a place with a kitchen, that's fine. Um, I, <laughs> my friend Kelly, she was telling me that she brings her crock pot and her George Foreman when she travels and people make fun of her, but that saved her so much money. And same, same, people make fun of me for it all the time. I don't care. I get to go fun and exciting places because I'm not spending all of my money at a restaurant. But you do you. If eating out is what is important to you, then budget accordingly. But I'm not taking cranky kids to an Applebee's. Take games. Having a game night in a cabin or a hotel room, there's just something about it that feels magical to children and letting them pick out the game to play. If your library does a game swap, do that. Maybe pick up a couple new ones at Walmart where you're out or at the thrift store and take some games. Noise machine is your friend. Get a white, get a white noise machine, 
take it with you. There's going to be unfamiliar sounds. If you're in a hotel, there's going to be doors opening and closing all night long. If you're staying in a cabin, there's like the creaking of a cabin. There's stuff in the woods. If there's other cabins nearby, there's the sound of that. There were some teachers on that Friday night in the hot tub in the cabin next to us who were unwinding and Lord bless them because if I had to deal with other people's kids, I would be in that hot tub unwinding too. Um, but that was a noise that we needed to deal with and I was so glad we brought two white noise machines. Wipes are your friend. Baby wipes, hand wipes, Clorox wipes, wipes. Trust me, I also have these little soap sheets that I take with me. I keep them in my pocket, I keep them in my bag, I keep them in my car because I have gone to the bathroom in enough state and national parks. I have gone in the woods enough times to know hand sanitizer, to know the, the sink, bathroom, hand washing situation isn't going to be what I want, but I've had my soap and a little bottle of water. We got clean hands. Hit the library before you go. New and exciting books, movies to watch in the car, hit the library. Also Disney Plus, if you have a tablet, download a couple movies because when our motto is when the sun is out the devices are away and so if we're in the car I pack lots of fun stuff for them to do or they can pack their own stuff. My One of my kids has a magnetic chess set that he and his brother play with but when the sun goes down and you're driving and kids are cranky it's nice to put on a movie. Preferably one they haven't seen before. Okay so I'm packing up some of the stuff that we're going to take to entertain our children, our little kids, both in the van and in the cabin. So I've got these are from the Dollar Tree. They're little magnetic tens. They're really cute. I got a Barbie one and a, uh, what do you call that? Spidey friends? Some Duplos, um, some sensory toys. These are little suction things that stick to the side or stick to a window. Some trucks, some magnets, some markers, a little bluey set. This was on clearance for $3 at Walmart one time. Some paper. These are called brain flakes. They all stack together. A book of Fairyland creatures and some of those mess-free papers and I have extra mess-free markers in there. Okay, I hope these tips help you. Leave me a comment below and tell me what some of your road trip tips are with kids. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you and we'll talk soon.